Hi, <laughs> my name is Ken Gehring. Uh, I'm with Thermostar. A few comments on uh, houses uh, and our expectations uh, and the problems we're finding with them. Uh, in green grass climates, uh, we expect to go out uh, and uh, go in a region where grass grows freely, three seasons of the year, and uh, dig a hole in the ground, uh, put a basement or a crawl space in, uh, add a nice well-built home with plenty of insulation and air tightening uh, procedures, and then test it to make sure it's tight yet besides. Uh, and then uh, we want to go and put occupants in it. We want them to be healthy and comfortable and uh, uh, satisfied uh, with the structure and uh, save a lot of energy. Uh, the point, finer points of all this uh, really gets down to the comfort and the quality of the air inside the home. Uh, for indoor air quality, we need uh, dry, we need uh, fresh air change uh, to uh, purge the indoor pollutants and renew the oxygen. Uh, ASHRAE, EPA, uh, American Medical Association are all suggesting today that we should have a uh, fresh air change uh, in four or five hours. Uh, and that we keep the temperature in the comfort range. Of course, everybody pretty much knows that, uh, 68 to 75 degrees. Uh, from the standpoint of comfort and uh, humidity, uh, 40% on the low side, 55% on the high side is comfortable for human beings. Plus, uh, it uh, prevents mold growth, uh, dust mites, bacteria, uh, different biologicals that we're becoming aware of. Now we go on to uh, the problems. That sounds pretty simple. Just putting fresh air on a well-built home should take care of this, put good air filter in it. Uh, but there are little problems. Uh, when the outdoor uh, dew point is uh, 40 to 55 degrees, uh, bringing this air into the home at the rate uh, desired uh, is comfortable and healthy. As uh, green grass climates by definition need uh, typically uh, an inch of rain a week uh, to sustain the green grass and sometimes uh, we have a situation where we might get uh, three, four inches in a day or a week or none and uh, we're expected to have uh, homes that still are comfortable and well ventilated. Uh, as long as the temperatures are high enough to make uh, the AC uh, operate uh, five, six hours a day and the uh, system set up properly, we can expect reasonable uh, humidity levels. But during wet, cool evenings, most evenings do not have the cooling load uh, and the air conditioner sets off more than on. Uh, and on the rainy days, the rainy weeks, or even a rainy month, uh, guess what? Uh, the indoor moisture levels uh, go up, and they'll go up to the point where they could reach on the, some of the surfaces of the home 100%, and it could be for uh, a week at a time. Well, uh, that's the end of our uh, uh, controlling mold and uh, mildew and bacterial growth and uh, even dust mites. Uh, uh, if, if they have humidity that's uh, plus 65% uh, for uh, weeks on end, uh, they do quite well any place skin scale falls. So what's the solution to all this? We can't have, uh, or I shouldn't say we can't have, some of us are attempting to have air conditioners that uh, run nonstop, overcooling the home, running real slow, uh, staying wet uh, and, and cold attempting to control humidity. A much better solution for that would be to have uh, some kind of supplemental dehumidification in the home that would actually complement the air conditioner. When the air conditioner can't remove enough moisture, uh, we would uh, uh, have the dehumidifier supplement the AC. Remove enough water to maintain 50% relative humidity throughout the structure. Uh, this would give us uh, the ideal environment. We've got a comfortable home, we have got good air change, we've got good humidity control, we don't have any biologicals growing in the home. Uh, everybody's happy. Uh, more later. Thank you.